Hi, I'm Josephine Krieg. I play Moira, the evil billionaire with a heart of gold. My name is Bitta Anderson. I'm the director. And Die Card is a lesbian action comedy musical with a splash of science fiction. Hi, I'm Lena Kuntel. I play lead singer of Die Card Riff, which goes on on a solo career. Hi, my name is Alle Eriksson. I play Bandido, the drummer in the band Dyke Hard. I watched the film and my first thought when I was uh, done watching it was like, how did this story come about? Who came up with this amazing idea? And how long did it take to develop the story? May I? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dyke Hard started as a, the first in a series of fake trailers that we wanted to make as sort of a wish list to the film industry. Like, we make these fake trailers for movies that we wish existed. Can you please give them to us? This is the movies we want. But uh, after having made one of those trailers, uh, these were all genre films, like uh, action, horror, uh, sci-fi, etc. Uh, after we made one, it was such a hassle, and it took like a year of spare time, and it only ended up in two minutes trailer. Uh, so we were like, ah, why don't we just t take all these fake trailer ideas and put them together in a feature-length script. So that's why Die Card is an all-genre script, or it was all-genre film. Yeah. And uh, before that, the idea with genre film was that we were watching a lot of that stuff. We really loved ninjas and cyborgs and all that, but it felt like it was not really made for us. It was made for some white straight guys, sort of, to enjoy. So we felt like we could make something that was intended for us more. And we also watch every queer movie we can get our hands on, but the queer movies are often very realistic and uh, problem-oriented, like talking about problems, uh, homophobia and such. And it's uh, very important, but it's also very depressing. Sometimes you just want some escape from reality, and you just want to relax, let your brain relax, and just enjoy. So that's Die Hard. It's sort of a hangover movie. <laughs> Retired brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very fresh for that, too, actually. But, um, but how it really has this sense or this feeling of community the film. And yeah. how did you uh, find the cast and, and began kind of the shooting process and organizing everything? Okay, so uh, I used to work in a feminist and queer bookstore in Stockholm uh, for four years and uh, most of the cast are customers and volunteers from that bookstore. Uh, and that bookstore had not only books but a lot of uh, social events. It was sort of a social space, queer social space. So we just, um, yeah, we took the human resources from there. And uh, do you guys remember how you got in engaged in this project? Do you yeah, remember your first? I remember. Yeah? Uh, I walked into uh, Vita's bookstore and uh, I, I was doing some acting at the time and uh, I walked in and Vita was telling me that uh, she was about to start shooting this uh, trailer. And uh, she's, I said, oh my God, can I be in it? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, we need someone who could do martial arts. It's like, I could do martial arts. And she was like, oh, cool, all right, okay, well, you could be this, do you want to be this character? It's over the counter of her bookstore. It's like, oh, can I sell? Yeah, okay, I'll buy that. But you could be this evil character if you don't mind beating someone up for, like, you know, an afternoon in a really weird sort of electrical power substation plant place that we really should be filming in. That was the pilot, the first fake trailer. Yeah. Uh, that was also called Die Card, and it was a martial arts yeah. fake trailer. Yeah. But uh, we kept the title Die Card, and we moved on to more genres. Do you remember how you got casted? No, I was also part of the first uh, trailer, uh, being uh, evil Thai boxer. Uh, so I guess from my excellent performance in that piece, I uh, got the offer to be part of this also. Yeah, and yeah. you? Yeah, I was an extra, actually, in, in, also in the trailer. Uh, but you know, I was just sitting and uh, sharing at the at the competition, the martial arts competition in the trailer. So uh, and then a bit uh, asked me. I think it also was in this uh, bookstore if I wanted to be uh, a part of the the full length movie. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, you can't say no to that. You, you just can't. You just can't. But the whole the whole cast is the whole cast is sort of a family. Like it's it's all friends of friends of friends. Of the community. I think when we did the premiere, it's about three hundred odd people who are in this uh, movie. All of them who seem to come from or have some connection to the queer, feminist, LGBT community of Stockholm mm -hmm. and even further afield. It's it's a community affair. Yes. Really, really proud of the fact that it's that, from yeah. that uh, <laughs> that community and it comes from there. Also, uh, sorry. Yeah, before we get back to the plot, I really want to talk about uh, production design 
because yeah. I loved uh, uh, the prison Dude. or what you know. It's, it's, <laughs> and I was really wondering how how did you? I guess you had very you know talented people that were building it together. I don't know, meeting on Sunday mornings or whatever, and just building <laughs> stuff. But I um, I was just like. There's like this, I was watching the film and the other thoughts were always about, you know, how did they do this? How did they practice those stunts? Or like, how did they build this prison? And how, you know, like this production design or like production But do you problems. remember when you wrote the script, Joseph yes. what you said? Okay, I, 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 I also was a writer for the script. Uh, they, well, I, they did their first draft and they sent it to me for an edit. And uh, I read the script and as you say, there's this incredible, it calls for this insane production design. And I said, I, the first thing I rang Bitta, and I had a, we had a teleconference on my phone, on a speakerphone, and I said, okay, Bitta, I've read the script. Can you do any of this? <laughs> like, really? Like, like, there's a scene where heads come off and float around, and we have no money, and there's a, a wall being knocked down. And she told me, like, no, 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 we can do only those things, exactly those things. We figured out we can do those things, so we put them in the movie. No other things we can do. <laughs> Okay, well, that's an interesting approach. You do what you know you can physically achieve. Yeah, so. because I have a background with uh, low-budget uh, physical special effects. So, uh, the, like the head crush or the prison wall or the, all that is physical the jumps, effects. Like the jumps is the Stockholm Parkour Academy. It's a bunch of teenage boys dressed up as our actors no. doing oh, some okay. flips. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. it's really hard with the teenagers. If you tell them not to take risks, mm -hmm. uh, it's fine. But when you bring a camera, they're going to do everything to impress you. So it was really hard. Like they just wanted to show off so bad. And uh, <laughs> yeah, one of them hurt his wrist, but it, it was fine. But uh, yeah, so that was some. Teenagers helping out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can tell by their shoes if you look very carefully. They have sneakers, not high heels. Oh, like you can also right. really tell by the color of their skin. Yeah, Although, they don't have the yeah. same skin color either, <laughs> but it's fine. Hey, it's low budget movie. Can you explain? Yeah, there's, it, there's so many people, you know, not seeing that. So yeah. they're like. I was like, yeah, it didn't strike me that much. No. I was like, how did they oh, do this? Yeah. Like, it's just impossible. But one big secret is uh, wigs. Uh, that's what I learned from the American uh, low budget film company where I used to work. That if you have no money, use the little money you have to wigs. Because uh, when you make a low budget film, it might take forever to finish. Uh, and the hair is going to, like, you know, if you can't pay your actors, you can't uh, make them have the same hairdo exactly for years and years. So the wigs is going to sell the character even if the face and body changes throughout time. Yeah. Plus, I, I've been acting as I think all the lead characters. When when you don't see their face, it's usually me wearing their mm -hmm. like outfit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like for example, pouring gasoline on the trailer, that's me. Or uh, we're putting out the piece of wood with nails, yeah, that's me. Uh, okay. okay. But I didn't wear sense. a wig, though. No. 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 <laughs> I think you were, I'm you were, you had the perfect, <laughs> we were looking for a good uh, profile, like, in my mind, they are already action figures, you know? I'm originally a comic book artist, so, sorry. So, hence the sort of graphic design of the whole project. Okay. And in my mind, they're already plastic, like, I can see them. And uh, I'm looking for a perfect profile, and you, you already had a perfect profile, so we, we stick with that. But I'm sorry you had to keep the same hair for four years. It's okay, it's okay. People like it, so I like it too. It looks beautiful, it looks very beautiful. Does it matter that it plays in Sweden? Does it matter at all? Or is it not of interest? Uh, I, well, I think we had some kind of international aim. Mm -hmm. That's one reason we chose English. Mm -hmm. uh, but the more we show it to people, the more it seems like it is a very Swedish film after all. And the humor seems to, like, it works in Sweden. I don't know where else it's going to work. But it seems Germans seem to have some yeah. common so ground the, yeah, with Swedes. Can you elaborate? Like, what is, what is the humor? Like, what, where is it specifically Swedish? Uh, it's because it, it's sort of a mystery to me, but I thought only queers would like this movie. And I felt like the, the Swedish uh, film world is very much the opposite of this film. It's very toned down, not too many colors, not too much drama. So I felt this is never going to work in Sweden, but I thought queers all over would like it. But I noticed it seems like, for example, in the US, it seems like people are like, like they, they're like, what is this? And but in uh, Turkey, they're like, woohoo! So it seems it's very humor. It's very specific to different places, I guess. But also with the community, I have to tell you that um, 
uh, this was supposed to be a very small uh, sort of for fun among friends project during a summer holiday but the community sort of rose and and just like came to me and said I want to act I want to do this I want to help I want to so we were just flooded with human uh, resources and I was like I can't just piss on all these resources we have to really turn this into a ambitious project we have so to it wasn't originally planned as a feature long well length. yes a feature but like filmed in a week or something she like told me it was really going to be six months six months six months and it would be done with, with the post-production included so it it's, was it's now four years four four or five years later yeah, yeah. So, did, how did you finance it? Was it all community based or did you uh, get some funding? In the beginning we had zero budget, yeah. uh, so we took the shittiest camera that was always available in my school that nobody would ever book. And uh, that's the camera we kept throughout the whole... <laughs> you know, we, once you start with one it's hard to yeah. swap. But, uh, but uh, w once all these uh, enthusiasm yeah. kept pouring in, I felt like, shit, I have to apply for money for this, we have to use this. So, we got uh, like... Uh, 15,000 euros from somewhere in Sweden and uh, that became like the start engine for all the wigs and all the like fabric for costumes and the scenography but a lot of the scenography is like recycled uh, exhibition walls from my art school and it's a lot of recycled material and like we sewn everything ourselves and so wh what do you wish to give with that film to the audience do you have any like is there an aim or like a message or something that is really important to do you, what do you guys want to bring what, to the yeah, audience? What's like the exper what was the experience like of finishing everything and I bringing wanna... the product to the festivals now? No, I just, I just think um, it's really a, a product of love. I mean, you can really feel it as you watch it that this has been, you know, like in the hearts of so many people. Uh, I mean, I think we were like 400 in, people involved in this movie, and you can really feel yes. it when you watch yeah, it that yeah. this is made with so much love, yeah. so much, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, everyone yeah. is rooting for yeah, this yeah. film. So yeah. that's, yeah. That's true. We, uh, we talked a little bit about irony, you know, like people keep saying it's an ironic movie, there's ironic jokes, it's sort of taking the, uh, f making fun of itself. And actually, this is, we've been talking about this, that it's, it's, n for me, I want people to have an unironic experience, like a genuine feeling of that love, of that experience, of that passion. Uh, you've said it is a no-brainer. I actually disagree. I think that there's a lot of thought that's gone into it mm -hmm. in the sense that if you watch it, there are some really careful choices about how we represent people. We wanted to be super ethical about certain storylines and features and uh, the way people are represented, mm -hmm. just to have a genuine, loving experience. I mean, the story is about friendship and, and care and being good to each other. And it's, it's sort of like a Bill and Ted's, you know, be awesome to each other story. And that's really what I want people to come away from, an unironic feeling of like pleasure. And like, that was, that was, that was great. You know? That's what I hope. I'm thinking about that, uh, what you said last night before the first screening, that uh, uh, we have a different uh, idea, uh, criteria of quality. Like there are different uh, norms of uh, what is good and what is bad. Like what's, uh, like you said earlier, it feels like an international production, and Bit is like, no, this is a Swedish cast. Like uh, this is a, we're uh, like explaining a reality which is uh, one perspective, which is not oftenly shown. And that goes for quality, that goes for genre, that goes for representation. Uh, like uh, the fact that it's. Uh, uh, it's not a straight norm, it's a lesbian norm, like you can always assume that it's, uh, you can, f uh, uh, a female or a f uh, female perceived character can always flirt with another uh, non-male character and it's not like, she's not, and never going to be rejected because uh, it's uh, based on a different logic. And that's uh, like turning the quality, the concept, conception of quality upside down and like making yeah telling another story and uh, well, we like worked really hard on trying to create that world and one thing we talked a lot about when we were writing was we want this world not to have those norms mm -hmm. and so again it seems like this roller coaster weird ride of god knows what but we worked really hard like we looked at dialogue choices like can we use this term and how can we represent this character and who should play that role in order to make that point so that it it's not visible and it's really not ever said but that world has different sets of standards of norms and what i'm really excited about is that it is 
conceptually understood by a broad audience. Like it's not just interested, you know, queer communities aren't just watching it, everybody is, and it seems to be intelligible. Mm. And I love that. It turns that norm on its head. And mm. for me, that that is the intellectual part of it. That is the sort of mm. like thoughtful part. And mm. I'm really glad that that's coming across. Mm. I'm really, really happy about that. And what I want with this movie is for people to feel empowered. I think uh, movies in general uh, are disempowering people. It makes them feel like uh, uh, invisible or uh, ugly or unsuccessful or whatever. Movies, uh, the norms in movies are kind of oppressive. But we want to make a movie that makes people feel good about themselves. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and like uh, laugh and uh, uh, yeah, an empowering movie. Not only for queer people, but for all people, I hope. Great. Thank you so much and thank you so much for bringing this important work to the festival. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you for having me. Bye. <laughs>